What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and this is another episode of Cinematography Breakdown where I take some of my favorite music videos that I've shot and break them down, you know, the gear, the lenses, the camera, the lighting, the way shots were framed, the way the shots were lit, and kind of just go through frame by frame on these videos. Well, frames that I think that are important and worth breaking down and just kind of show what was going through my head at the time and how they were shot. If you notice this right here, I got a different mic. Editor Key sent me the SL600, so I'm checking it out right now. Probably not going to make a review on it. The sound of this mic will be the only review you need. It's a USB large diaphragm condenser mic, and it's uh, pretty nice. It's pretty cool. It's got some orange and black accents and uh, volume and headphone jack, but you're not here for that. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description. You're here for this video. Let's get into it. This is a couple of dudes called SNRK and uh, super talented guys. We've shot a couple videos for these guys now, but... Um, this video kind of has like this Steve Urkel type thing where they're like these nerdy scientists and then they turn cool. Um, they're trying to make some kind of like crazy concoction throughout obviously rapping. But uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. So this first scene is of an eagle. I've never worked with live animals before, so that was kind of cool. Um, this main scene was kind of set up the same. I kind of shifted some lights around for close-ups of the birds and stuff like that. But basically we have one huge light mat 4 plus above his head. Way up. I'll show you in a bit later how this was set up. And then I had another key coming in from the edge here. So if you've ever actually studied light, the best way to see, especially on animals and humans, is where the light is glistening off the eye. So in here you can actually see we got one little light here another light here. So this one is the main key and this one is kind of like a little edge light here and that's this light right here. It's pretty cool. I've never been this close to an eagle actually and I think we were using the Zeiss 50mm f1.4 on this shot and I was obviously shooting on my Canon C200 for this and I was on the Ronin DJI uh, M. So that was the lens, the gimbal and the camera we were using for this and that's how we shot this first opening scene. I didn't know this was the opening scene, this is just a bunch of different animals we were running through and we had some cool handlers on site, and uh, yeah, these birds are pretty cool. Alright, so starting out right from the beginning again, jump into his buddy, he's sleeping at the science lab, we poke the camera, which isn't actually the camera, it's supposed to be the concoction they're working on. Then we got a pull back on the gimbal, a couple of b-roll shots of the science lab stuff. So this close-up shot here of him looking at this goo, whatever they're making, some kind of substance they're making. Let's talk about the lighting on it. As you can see, there's a couple of light glares right here. And then we've got blue light coming in from here and then a light soft key overhead like this. And so this blue light under his eyes here is actually a pixel tube, which is mounted under the desk. It's a long tube light like this, RGB LED light and it's kicking up light from the bottom. Then we've got another one of them on the right hand side here, kicking in the light from the right side. And then we have a soft light mat over top of his head, but it's up actually really high and it's brighter when they're standing up. He's obviously leaning down and I'm table level with him here. And I was actually using uh, just a tripod shot here for this. So that's a good shot to actually show the entire room here. So as you can see, we've got pixel tubes all around the room here. Some here, um, you can actually see one down here, one in this back corner down here, and there's actually one mounted under the desk. You know the one I was saying was kicking light up into his eyes. And then we also have another practical light back here, which is one of those fluorescent lights that has a magnifying glass in it. I think that was actually brought in by art department, I'm not sure, but the art direction was really good on this video. Obviously they made a cool little lab here. And we've got a bunch of stuff. We got beakers here and you know microscope and stuff like that, which is really cool. If you're starting out in filmmaking, good set design and lighting is kind of more important than the camera, to be honest. Then you can see we have our key light, which is way up here, which is a light map 4 plus. And everything has kind of a nice soft haze to it because I was using a uh, black promist on this. I think this is the Canon 24 millimeter F1.4. That was the lens we were using on this. And uh, yeah. So yeah, it's just push-ins and pull-outs using the gimbal, some pans and stuff like that. So we mix gimbal shots with tripod shots. Cut to a tripod shot. 
Okay, so there's that Tokina 11 to 16 shot again. Um, it's not a lens that I use very often, and I'm definitely shooting this at 11 millimeters, so as wide as I can go. Um, you can see the overhead key light up here. And I was shifting things around based off the scene. So if I knew they were gonna be leaning into the camera, I actually readjusted the light. So that key light actually came down. I don't know if you've seen in the behind the scenes how I had it set up, but I had it on a huge 2K stand, uh, boomed out as far as I could go. And uh, not sure if I had a grid on it or not, I can't really remember. But then we obviously have another one of those pixel tubes coming from the side here that's lit up kind of a teal color. So it's hitting and adding a bit of color around his face here. And I think it's really cool looking at the camera like that. It's got kind of like a 90s rap Beastie Boys style music video look to it. But uh, I don't typically use that lens that often, but in this case it looks really good. And since this was a performance video, we really wanted to try a different lens like that just to give a different look, different vibe, and I think it cut well with the other lenses. These guys are awesome on camera. Obviously, uh, Travis, who was directing this, had a couple of different things he wanted them to do. And uh, I think it came across kind of humorous. It's supposed to be funny. Oh, so then we cut to this uh, computer here. This computer is a little bit of CGI. The computer was there, but what was on the screen wasn't there. So this whole shot was intentionally set up like this. So we have the one pixel tube here, and then obviously the practical here hitting his face. We made sure that he was staggered behind him. It looks like he's over his shoulder, but he was actually pretty far back, but it's kind of cheated in the shot. And then we have another pixel tube here, lighting the edge of the computer and it's kind of lighting the edge of his hair here. And uh, this is all CGI on the computer, but it looks pretty good. Like, I mean, it's an old computer. It probably would look like that. So it looks into the microscope. That was actually the shot here was, I think we used the Canon 100 millimeter macro and you can see the way the light was positioned in his eye. And it's supposed to look like he's looking up to the microscope so the camera lens is like the microscope because when he looks into it he sees this like concoction thing that's being made pushing on the gimbal that was a little zoom in and post back to that ultra wide couple of b-roll shots of the beakers we did a lot of push-ins. So this is where they drink the concoction they were making. It warps into this crazy like dream sequence. And now the video is completely different. So we need to talk about this first shot here. So it, it flashes through a bunch of different scenes that were filmed as B-roll throughout the video to kind of get you into the next scene. So they drink the stuff and then everything changes and now they're gonna be cool, I guess. They had a couple models come in and um, Everything was awesome. The, the art direction was good. The makeup was good. The styling was good. Everything was really good on this video. And so obviously we can see this overhead light and that's the Lightmap 4 Plus. And we had it on this huge system that we built out of uh, tubing. And we had it way up high. It was probably 30 feet across. And so we got that nice light coming down. I definitely have it gridded off so it comes down almost like a spot. And then we have another key off to the side so that we get a bit of light in her eyes because otherwise you wouldn't get that. Um, you'll see in the behind the scenes how we had it set up. We line the floor in pixel tubes so we make kind of an outline. You can see them all here. So we were in a big warehouse and there was garage doors behind and we really didn't want to see them so I made sure to use that grid so that we didn't have any light kicking into the back there. You can kind of see a little bit back there but it's not that obvious to be honest. So these pixel tubes on the floor just kind of create this cool outline around the scene that we're shooting. Um, it's a good kicker for eye light as well. Kind of wish the floor was all the same color but you get what you get sometimes. So again, overhead key and we got another one coming in from the side here so they get a bit of light in their eyes and then obviously the light coming down. While they're dancing there, shows the way the room was lit. We got these pixel tubes here. Overhead key. So my concern was every time they came off the throne and they were a little bit further out, I needed to keep them lit. So I obviously had another key light back here it's hard to show it. It's hard to show depth, like 3D depth. It wasn't right sideways. It was kind of pulled back in front. So 
just gonna zoom in to kind of give you an overhead view. So if we had the throne here, made the overhead light right here, angled down at the throne. So it's lighting just directly over the throne. If the two guys were out around here, I had another key light coming in like this on a 45, making sure they were still lit too. So I didn't have it as bright so that it wasn't throwing light over the whole scene. It was just enough to hit them and give them a bit of light. You can see it's hitting his face right here and a bit of him here and he's off the throne. So they're off. He's now a couple feet off. So you have to keep the light coming out as well. So we kind of just stay in this world. The lighting stays pretty much the same. The only thing I change is if we get some close-ups, I bring that key light in a little closer. Most of this was just gimbal. So I obviously changed the lighting around for her. So we still have the overhead, but as you can see, things are a little bit more lit up properly. So I actually brought in, I think a pixel tube actually. I brought in a white pixel tube and you can see it's hitting the edge of her hand here. It's bringing in just a little bit more light. You can actually see it reflecting off her fingers here. And so I had a little bit more light just brought in for those close-ups so that you can accent things a little bit better. Um, you'll see a little bit more detail when you're close up, so that's why I did that. This is definitely a 50 millimeter f1.4 as well. So I just want to take a minute here and talk about today's sponsor, and that's GearFocus.com. GearFocus is an awesome site to buy and sell used camera gear. And you know, if you have some extra camera gear laying around, like a camera or a lens or anything really, GearFocus is a good place to start to make some extra cash. Or if you're looking to buy a camera and you're looking to find something new, Maybe check out to see if there's something used. You might find a better deal. So once you've set up an account with Gear Focus, you can start listing your items. You need to make sure that you take some good images of the actual product so that the buyer knows exactly what they're getting. Then fill out the description, the category, and price that you're looking to get for your item. And once you're done, your item will be listed. It's that easy. The buyer and seller can also message each other so the seller could ask more questions about the sale, which is super helpful. And you know, I've only had my shop up for a couple months now and you know, I've sold three or four things, which is really awesome. It's also really nice to know that it's a safe place to sell gear. Gear Focus handles all the transaction and money side of things so you know you're safe compared to selling it in person through like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, especially now since we shouldn't really be meeting in person anyway. Gear Focus only takes a small 3.5% transaction fee per sale, which is way better than eBay's insanely high fee. So make sure to check out my shop at GearFocus.com. Link is in the description. Thanks to Gear Focus for sponsoring this video. So the video's pretty much done, just a bunch more B-roll shots. We did have actually that one scene where they're up against the tin wall there, this one here. So this was just another option to have if we wanted some extra cutaway shots. So they're just up against the tin wall, one light. We had the light mat overhead here coming in on 45. You can actually see it in his glasses. And I had him pulled out from the wall about four feet just so we had a bit of separation. You can see the background's a little bit more blurry. It's a little bit softer. I also did that so that he didn't cast any shadows on the wall. So the wall was also lit up from the same light, but there was no shadows. I definitely didn't use a grid on this. I wanted that light to spill to that back wall. And we also had a machine that was actually firing out confetti. I don't know if it looked good on camera. I don't think it got used. And that's basically most of this video. There's maybe one shot left at the end. We were planning on using that as an alternate scene for them to change into like the cool guys. So like the liquid concoction thing they were making actually blew up and turned them cool. But I guess it was better to have them drink it. So we had two options, the drinking the solution or the solution blowing up on them. And uh, Travis decided to throw that in at the very end of the video because it's kind of funny when they get hit with that stuff. And it made a huge mess. Um, I actually bagged my camera up because I didn't want it to get covered and stuff, but that's basically it for this. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. If you like this series, you know, check out some of the other videos I got. I'll put this in a playlist. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. See you guys in the next one.